In this video, I'm just going to run through um, some more advanced reconciliations. So um, how to split payments, how to post and prepayments and how to set up some bank rules so you can get zero to do most of the work for you in your bank postings. OK, so I've logged into my bank account, a reconciliation page. I'm just going to run through examples on how you can do certain things. So the first example I'm going to show you is if you're out by a small amount, perhaps you've got money come into your bank account and it's out by a few pennies, um, or there's a bank fee on there that you just need to put to your bank fees code. So I'm going to use this Swanston security as an example. So I'm going to match this. So I'm going to click on match and it's going to bring up all my outstanding invoices against my suppliers. Uh, now let's see if we can just find the Swanston security. There it is, Swanston security. So I'm just going to click on that. Um, now you can see that the amount is £59.54, however we've actually paid them £59.55, so we're out by a single penny. Um, because we're out and there's a small remainder of a penny, it's not going to let me click the reconcile button. So I'm going to use this adjustments button here and I can specify why we're out. So if it's a bank fee, I can pop that in or if it's just a minor adjustment, um, I'm going to say minor adjustment in this example, I can click onto that. I just need to pop in the amount. So in this scenario, it's just a penny. And now I can click reconcile because everything nets down to zero. And that's how you would deal with small bank charges um, or if you're out by a few pennies just because of a typo or something when the payment was made. The next example I'm just going to run through uh, is if someone, if, if you paid a supplier or a customer has paid you um, part of the invoice that's outstanding. Um, so I'm going to use this example here for Majestic Contracting. So we've received £450 from a customer. So I'm going to match this to an outstanding invoice. So let's just see if we can find Majestic. There they are. And the invoice is actually for £900. So it seems like they've paid us half of the invoice. So I'm just going to click onto that invoice and I can see that I get an option here to split it. So I'm going to use this option. And when I click split, you can see that zero has started populating this for us. So there was the balance of £900. Um, they made a part payment of 450 which means that they still owe us £450 after this. So I'm just going to click split. So now I've got two lines here, uh, each for £450, one of which we have now matched to. So if I scroll down to the bottom here, you can see that I've got no remainder, everything's been matched off and I can click reconcile. So that just means when the second lot of the £450 comes through, um, I'll just have £450 left on that account that I can match to. So that's absolutely fine. The next example is if you get a prepayment. Um, for example, we'll use uh, eBank as our prepayment. So we've received £200, um, but perhaps we haven't invoiced them yet. But same if you were to pay a supplier. Um, in that example. So what I could do here is I could just use the create option and I could just pop in the name of the contact. I could put it to my prepayments code and I would just enter my description and I would post it as a cash transaction. So that's if we haven't actually got an invoice in the accounts yet. Perhaps we haven't sent one or we haven't received um, the invoice from the supplier yet, although we've already made a payment. The next example or examples that I wanted to just run through with you is how to set up uh, some bank rules. So you can see in this particular company, we've got a fair few um, small transactional amounts going out of our bank account. Um, most of them seem to be for some sort of parking. Now, I don't want to have to go through each of these lines and pop in my contact and then account code and description, much rather that Zero do this for me. Um, you can see that, you know, there's a lot of um, similarities between all these different lines. So I can set up some rules, which means that Zero will start doing some of the work for me. So I'm going to use this central city parking one as my example. So on this line, I'm just going to click options. I'm going to click create bank rule. 
So it's going to take me through to a page and it's populated the first part for me. Um, so it said, this is where you'll add in your criteria of all your different bank rules. So um, it said pay equals central city parking, which is fine. If I wanted to add another condition, for example, um, I might have a specific description on my bank statement or a reference. Um, and then the, the bank statement line would have to match all of these conditions or any of them. So that's up to you. So it's however you want to set up your bank rule. I'm just going to leave this as it is for now. Um, so what, what I want uh, Zero to do is set the contact as Central City Parking when it sees the payee. So that's fine. Um, so field number three. Um, so if there's always going to be a fixed amount that I want to put to a specific nominal code, I can add that in here. Um, usually it would be that you'd want perhaps to use option four instead of this because there's probably unless it's highly likely that there's going to be a fixed value each time um, you'd want to use option four to start allocating out to your nominal codes so for, for this example with parking um, it's not always going to be the same amount so i'm going to use this number four option here so i'm going to add a line i want the description uh, to be parking uh, central. I want my account to go to, um, let's see if we've got one, we probably don't. Um, I wonder if there's motor vehicle expenses. Um, yep, we'll put it to that. Tax rate, I can leave on there, I can just put it to a, a zero tax rate. Region, um, this is my tracking category, so I could put in a tracking category here if I wanted to, and I'm going to leave that as 100% because I want all of these fees to go to this code. If you wanted to split this across uh, multiple codes and you had a certain percentage as to which you want to split it, you can do that, for example, if you were splitting across different um, tracking categories. Uh, the reference will be set by me during bank rec, or I can um, take the reference from perhaps the description on the bank accounts. So this is just going to be the reference that's going to go through on your transaction. Target a bank account, uh, run this rule on business bank accounts. So again, if you've got more than one bank account, you could specify this rule for all of them, or is it just the one bank account you want this rule to be set in? And you just have to give the rule a title. So I'm just going to leave it as central city parking and I'm going to save that. Oh, so on that, I've got an error come up. So let's go through these. All ratio lines must have a percentage and a fixed amount. So that's just because I added another line here as an example. Um, so let's just resave that. Okay. Cool, so now that I've set up that rule, you can see that actually Zero has started to populate this information for me. So anytime that it sees central city parking, it's actually done my creation of a transaction for me. So moving forward, anytime that that comes through on my bank statement, uh, Zero should just create this for me and it's just a checking exercise and I can click OK. If, um, I, if there's an exception to the rule and I don't actually want this rule to apply, I can click this option here. And also if I've found that the rule that I set up isn't quite working how I needed it to work, I can click edit rule here and I can change it. I'm just gonna click okay on those. So as you can see, it really, really saves you some time. Now, if I want to see an overview of all my bank rules that I've set up, um, I just need to click on manage account up on the top right here. And I've got an option here for bank rules. Um, so I've got two set up here, which are my spend money rules. Um, so you can add rules from here. Um, or we can do receive money rules. So if you've got money coming into your account and you've got a specific set of uh, criteria and rules that you want to set up, you can do that here. And same for transfer rules. So perhaps you're doing transfers between your bank accounts and so you just want um, zero to recognize when it's a bank transfer. So by setting all of these rules up, you're just saving yourself some time um, and moving forward as you use the system more and more, 
um, bank reconciliations will become much more of a checking exercise than a manual data input exercise. So you can really get on top of your bank postings um, and have real-time data in your accounts.